And this is where we left off last time. So there's this thing um, in inside of the nucleus called, called <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the strong nuclear force. Now, um, it is it is only an attractive force. Uh, and of course, you know that the the electric force is both a uh, is both a uh, attractive and a repulsive force. But since inside of the nucleus you only have protons, um, well, you have protons and neutrons, but the neutrons do not have a charge, so they do not possess an electric force. So they're not the neutrons aren't repelling each other. But what the neutrons are doing, and and the protons as well, is they carry within them this strong nuclear force all right so it's it's basically the 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 binding the nuclear binding energy if you will um it's a, you can think of it that way as you know what's holding the nucleus of atoms together you know what you have all these protons you know like, like take uranium for example i mean that that's that's a really good example is you, you know you have all these protons not 92 of them and the ones that are really, really far away from each other um, don't feel as great as, as of an attractive force um, to, to the nucleus. And, um, and the, uh, the, the repulsive force, it, the repulsive force barely goes down. Um, I mean, it does go down a little bit, but not much over the, the size of an atomic nucleus, e even the one as large as as uranium, um, so, so the repulsive force, for, for all intents and purposes, is is almost exactly the same whether you're talking about a, a helium atom or or a uranium atom. It's it's for all, almost exactly the same, but it's quite different um, for uh, you know for for small small atoms and versus a really large atoms, right? So really really large atom. Now this is not a good example of the, the picture that we're looking at right here. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see it in just a, in just a moment. All right, so let, let's keep moving here. Um, so here's a quick quick uh, question: The strong force is a force that is in the. Um, and so if you looked at this, uh, it's actually in the nucleus, and it's what holds the nucleons. Remember, nucleons are both protons and and neutrons, and that's what holds hold. That's the force that holds them together. You can also think of it as the energy that holds it together. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with thinking of it that way. All right. And, and just keep in mind, the strong nuclear force is a, it, it acts over very, very short ranges. It, it's something like 10 to the minus 15th meters. Um, that's, the, that's, that's the extent of the strong nuclear force. And it only, it only exists in you know at the size of the nucleus of atoms hence its name the strong nuclear force all right anyhow um so here's another example for you know that this is this is one of the most stable atoms there is right this is helium um this is of course helium four which has two the the red here you know, kind of red uh are protons and uh, these silver looking ones are the neutrons but they all uh, contain, you know, hold this or have this strong nuclear force, and and um, this this basically acts. It, this is a very very stable nucleus. This this never undergoes radioactive decay, right? Um, in, in fact, uh, this is one of those ones. Remember, I I mentioned the, those magic numbers of of two, right? So there's two protons and there's two neutrons. So so this is an extremely sta stable situation. All right, um, but but notice, of course, um, overall it has a pot plus two charge because there's two protons. So just keep that in mind. Um, and and those two protons will, don't want to be next to each other, right? They they would they would normally um, move away from each other, and so this they they've gotten close enough um, to each other that the strong nuclear force. Um, which which is 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 in all of these um, these nucleons, including the including the neutrons, um, will easily hold this thing together. All right, so so here's you know here's another example. Let's take you know a much larger atom, um, and so you know an, a proton on this side 
and a proton on the opposite side of the atom. So th this is a much bigger, I mean, it's, it's bigger compared to the helium, right? Um, it's a much bigger atom. So um, the, this strong nuclear force is not quite as binding um, bet between protons on opposite sides of, of the nucleus of the atom. And, and the, thing, the thing that happens, of course, is the larger these things get, um, and, and, and so you basically you need a bunch of um, you need a, more neutrons or right? so these silk these the grayish looking things um, you need more of them than uh, than you have protons right remember elements between 21 21 protons all the way to um, uh, 83 protons you need um, there, there's a range right so you need um, uh, let's see. So, so the range is uh, 1.5 to 1, right? So, so there's 1.5 neutrons to every one uh, proton, and that keeps this more or less stable. And then it can be as the ratio can be as low as um, 1.25 neutrons to every one um, to every one proton, and that so that range. Uh, is is stable. Remember that's and that's just a a manner of predicting whether a nucleus is going to be actually is going to be radioactive or not. All right. So um, you know it, it it also depends on whether there's if there's an odd number of nucleons, it, it tends to be less stable. Um, but ultimately, you you have to actually you know look look at these things with a with a Geiger counter to see if there's any radi radi radiation coming off, all right? And so um, remember these larger atoms tend to uh, have either beta decay or, um, or alpha decay. And so alpha decay, they're basically um, two neutrons and, and two protons take off from the nucleus. What's really strange is um, in beta decay, one of these, one of these neutrons, um, which you can kind of think of a neutron as a proton, even though it's it's not charged, right? A proton plus it, the neutron is slightly more massive, just slightly more massive than a proton by itself. Um, and so the new ne the neutron within an atom, um, neutrons by themselves are not stable at all. They 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 disintegrate almost. Um, I think they have like a half life of fifteen minutes or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to actually look that up. But uh, I, I remember somewhere in the back of my mind that a, 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 nu a, a neutron by itself has a half-life of about 15 minutes. Anyhow, what it does is it undergoes a, a beta decay. Um, and, and so what's, what's, what happens is, you know, an electron seems to fly out of the nucleus. It's really coming from one of the neutrons, and that leaves behind an, 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 an extra proton. Right? So that changes the atom, right? So that atom has one more proton. So it's one higher on the periodic table when, when there's a beta decay. With, a, with an alpha decay, it's, you know, it's lost two protons. So it's two steps back, two steps down the periodic table. All right, um, half-life. All right, so half-life is uh, the rate, the rate of decay of so this is only for radioactive isotopes right so you have to have an isotope that's radioactive for example um, and I know I've mentioned this before right carbon normally has um, you know the, the, it has uh, six protons and six um, neutrons so carbon carbon that's called carbon twelve um, that's not radioactive that's a very stable uh, isotope but um, carbon fourteen, which is actually created in the upper atmosphere by by uh, the nitrogen atoms in the upper atmosphere being bombarded by cosmic rays uh, from space, um, which there's nothing anybody can do about. Um, the cosmic rays from space will will turn some of the some of the uh, nitrogen um, atoms into uh, carbon fourteen. So what the, what that means, of course, is the carbon um, the, those those now carbon atoms have uh, two extra neutrons, right? So um, and and they and that is radioactive. 
and the half-life of carbon. So this is just one example of a, of a radioactive isotope. There are many other uh, isotopes. Like for example, let me let me think. Uh, one of them is is um, um, iodine one thirty one, right? Um, that, that's a that's a very typical. That's a actually, <coughs> excuse me. That's used in medical um, in medical uh, radiology. Um, uh, it's, that's actually used for the thyroid. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. Um, but but you know, there's many many different types of of isotopes. Remember, any element that is greater than eighty three bismuth, if so, it's, if it's you know higher than bismuth. It is it is automatically radioactive, and so we measure the decay rates in the laboratories. It's really simple. To, well, not really simple, but it, it's something that we've been doing for over a hundred years. Um, and you know, anytime we encounter radioactive isotopes, we measure the uh, the decay rate, and 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 so um, you know, there's always published half lives of these things. It's what they're well known. Um, you can you know look at look it up. You can look up um, if you go into Google and you type, you know, table of of uh, radioactive isotopes, you'll get a big old list of different uh, radioactive isotopes. And generally, they'll give you what the half lives are and st things like that. All right. So so the half life is the time it takes half of the radioactive substance to turn into whatever it's going to turn into. Now. That, that that that's that seems like a simple thing, right? Like for example, um, the, the you know the the carbon fourteen that always becomes nitrogen, right? So the, that that one's a really simple one. But some of the other radioactive things, like for example, um, uranium uh, two thirty eight, the most common type of uranium that you find on the Earth, um, that that actually has um, it de when it decays, it decays in steps and those steps um, the, the, the the consecutive steps are called da daughter atoms and it'll, they'll ultimately they will de you know the the original atom uh, will decay in in st you know one step two step however many steps it takes and it'll get to some stable atom for example uranium 238 always becomes lead 206 always right that's just uh, that's just the way it works all right, um, and the thing about the decay rate, it's constant. It had, you can, we cannot, there's nothing we can do. So if you have a radioactive isotope, that that is a very, it actually turns out to be a really good thing that it's a constant um, because we use it to make measurements, right? We, we, can, we can use the, these known half-lives, these measured half-lives to determine the age of things, anywhere from the age of, of, of the solar system to the age of, of uh, rocks to the age of um, uh, li different living, you know, li living species, you know, the things that lived uh, thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years ago. All right. Um, and so, so the way that's calculated is by many, and you'll, you'll see the equation um, that, that is used to, calculate half-life. We'll, we'll do some examples of that. Um, I'm just going to go over the PowerPoints right now, so we'll, we'll do some examples in a little bit. Um, so uh, you, me you basically measure how much how much the material is there, and then you can, um, you can, fig you know, you can figure out what, you know, how long it took. Um, the, so, by, by the way, some of the examples that I'm going to do initially, there'll be a certain number of half-lives that go by. Um, now, you know, if, if like, take, for example, carbon-14, right? Carbon-14, if I remember correctly, it's 5,730 years is the half-life, right? So, um, you know, if, if something is, you know, has, uh, it has been around for, for, for two half-lives, you know, it would be, you know, 5,730. 30 years um, times two, that's how old it would be. So, you know, 11,000 something, right? I'm not gonna do, uh, <coughs> I don't have my calculator right now. Um, but but that's that's the way it works. But with the formula, um, you, can, you, can, you, you don't have to have 
a whole number of half-lives that